Lurch, I got a little something to make you smile this evening. Oh, yeah? Can you imagine now a world Ooh. without a cell phone? Can you imagine a world without a cell phone? Some days, I'd, yeah, it'd be nice. Put your cell phone down. Throw all that aside. Hop on a bike and go. Per Sturgis, Jeff. There you go. <laughs> Taking you back. We got to do one more. The internet. The airwaves. All right, one more. The way that the world exists today. Uh, those were on the soundboard. Good old Sturgis Jeff. We had to, uh, once in a while, we just have to remind everybody of uh, some past episodes we did with Sturgis Jeff. Okay, here we go, Lurch. You got to uh, listen to this. Okay. Okay. We're going to see how this poem goes. It's a motorcycle poem, fresh out of Chat GPT. <laughs> I don't know. If you asked Chad GPT I just said to write a, motorcycle a, wrote a motor. Write a motorcycle. We haven't poem. started out with a saying or a poem in a long time. No, we haven't. Oh, this may call. or may not make sense. All right. I didn't write it. I don't know where it pulled from. Uh, who's, so whose voice does it use? It's going to use mine. No way. Yeah. Well, I just said write. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to read it. Oh, I see. Yeah, I just said. I just asked. I said write a motorcycle poem. Oh, okay. I just was looking so, up at the TV <clears> screen, saw a. Uh, oh yeah, a yeah player. No, so I did. That's know your voice mail. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Let's okay, I'm going to let it rip. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And oh, again, it may or may not make sense. Hopefully it somehow pulls your heartstrings, touches your soul, and you can thank chat GPT. All right, here we go. <clears throat> In a realm where asphalt rivers flow, a two-wheeled steed, both fierce and bold, roars to life with a thunderous show, a motorcycle, a tale untold. Its engine purrs with a primal might as freedom calls from the open road. In the saddle, we take flight, leaving behind life's heavy load. Wind in our hair and the world a blur as we chase the horizon's endless line, two wheels dancing. We're free to confer with the world, with dreams, with the divine. Lean into turns, a ballot, a ballet of grace. The asphalt sings beneath our tires. In the fleeting moment, we embrace the rush of life, the burning fires. Through mountains high and valleys low, on the steel beast, we find our way in the symphony of the engine's flow. We live for the ride each and every day. So let us ride into the unknown. On our trusty motorcycles, we soar. With every twist and turn, we've shown that the open road is what we adore. In the brotherhood of riders, we belong under the sun and beneath the moon. The heart of the motorcycle beats strong in our souls where freedom is our tune. It's not horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, when, when they said mountain and valleys, it made me think, of, ain't no mountain high enough. <laughs> right. Ain't no valley low enough. <laughs> no, no, dude. So I don't know how that, it, well, it's interesting. Does it steal? From oh. all kinds of different poems. Oh yeah, put, yeah. just put one together. Now I could have used stuff, Bard and some. I could use Bard and a few other things to okay, like. I don't know what that is. Well, I'm not going to explain okay, it right here, thanks. but <laughs> it's some other. There's so many things pulling from Chat GPT. Uh, I could use Bard because it will reference like some of the things where it pulled from. Oh, gotcha. But honestly, uh, I could have just completely stole because uh, that's what Chat GPT does. It's just. It's crawled probably a bunch of websites. Just and, put a bunch of stuff together. But it gets better over time. Yeah. Because it is, you know, AI. Right. And it's it's machine learning. Mm -hmm. And so the more you ask it to do stuff like this, the more. So it's interesting. But uh, nonetheless, I have no idea if that's copyrighted material, any of it or all of it. <laughs> and I have no source for it. Uh, but we will, maybe I'll copy and paste it. And if you like the poem, uh, we can... Uh, Copy and paste it into the uh, show notes. Yeah, yeah. Remind me after the episode. Okay. There you go. I thought it was a fairly decent poem. It's not bad at all. For uh, Better just, than I could do. I literally had never read it. I didn't even read it. I, oh. I didn't know if it was going to say something funky. I just literally just typed in, typed it in, and, and there we go. All right. Lurch. Yeah, buddy. Now, I did some uh, uh, background checking on you. You did? I did. Recently, or oh, you know, just when I need to. <laughs> okay. I mean, before I hired you, I want to know your rap sheet. You know, I would think you know twenty some years know, you'd know it by now. I wanted to know if you've ever <laughs> raped another man. I have not. Um, you've come close. Well, you know, you've you stuck know, your tongue in my ears. That's not when great. you're drinking. Well, that's it feels like <laughs> that's just foreplay. 
<laughs> well, it feels like it. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, but I heard back in the day, not so much now because you're old and you've got saggy balls and you're just, you know, you change as you get older. But I hear back in the day, dude, you were a motor boating fool. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me a motorboat? <laughs> yeah, oh, nice. I like the cheeks. The cheeks, dude. You yeah, got yeah. I do it you too. Gotta relax, you got to relax. You got to. You got to let the cheeks. <laughs> oh, there you shake. go. <laughs> oh, very nice. Uh, too bad this one isn't on video. For you guys. Maybe we'll God, do that. We're not. doing a live one this Friday. We are. So maybe you'll get to see us motorboat on. Only if you're a patron member. It's a live video broadcast and chat. So uh, yeah, yeah. By the time you hear this, we've already done it. But anyways, uh, you know. The deal is uh, we're always taking care of the guys and trying to find products, mm -hmm. but we know that we have also a demographic of female listeners we do. and followers, and especially on the YouTube channel and stuff. So, you know, we felt we should take care of the ladies. It's only right. In the same token, we're taking care of the guys, and here's how. Okay, dude, I know you've been down to motorboat before, and it can be a little bit clammy. I mean, it's not it's not her fault, uh, the boob crack can get, you know, a, a clammy. I mean... Uh, could have been a hot summer day. It could have been, exactly. Got a little, little under boob sweat going on. That's right. Well... A little between the boob sweat. A little, it, exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And, you know, although, you know, motorboating is still fun. Either it's, way. Yeah. It is better if, they're, it. if it's not clammy and it <laughs> smells good. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, so we come up, we have a product. This is a legit product. It is fresh breasts for all you ladies. Now, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash fresh breast. That's lawbiddingbiker.com forward slash fresh dash breast. We don't even have a commercial made for this really lurch, but we're going to give you a little bit of the, okay. If you go to that link, no additional cost to you. We do get a small uh, kickback, but it's fresh body and breast anti-chafing deodorant. It's not just for your breasts, ladies. It can go down in the nether nether region, not in it. Around we've, it. We've established yes. that on a past podcast. Yes, we did some research and you're not <laughs> supposed to stick it in your vag. <laughs> there's only certain things. Although I, you know, depending on what websites you visit, like Lurch, there's a lot of things that can be stuck in the vag. Anyways, uh, he tells me of this. I don't partake. Um, Lurch is kind of a dirty old man. Anti-chafing. Oh, he's just staring at me. Whole body deodorant for women. Under boob sweat and inner thighs. Oh, yeah. No talc. Aluminum. And fragrance, it says. All right. No aluminium. So there you go, gals. Lawbitingbiker.com forward slash fresh dash breasts. And for all you guys to keep those these nuts fresh, lawbitingbiker.com forward slash fresh dash balls. Fresh dash balls. Yes, those are legitimate links, people. And uh, like I say, if you click through and uh, we need some feedback. We've had some feedback on the fresh balls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we would like more feedback. So please hit us up, lawbodybiker.com forward slash contact. And you ladies, if, you're, if you've if you partaken uh, in the affiliate link that we just gave and you've used fresh breasts while you're out and about, and uh, give us, a, give us uh, uh, some feedback. Uh, on Amazon, it got 7,535 four-star ratings. I think the it would have got five stars, but the lady, a few ladies, did not read the directions and stuck it in. <laughs> Somebody and, uh, did, you know they yeah, did. <laughs> and then they're giving it a bad review. <laughs> I put it on my finger, and yeah, uh, uh, I can, I'm not even reading. Started those burning. Well, you know, I I'm half tempted to order some for the old lady. I oh, just dude. don't know and ask her to test it, but I don't. You know, it's a gamble because if you hand your wife some, it's true. Fresh breasts, she might say, "What? You right. don't think they're fresh? I right. don't know." Yeah, it's, it's true. It could be a gamble, but if I told her it's uh, for the podcast. It's you know. hygiene for breasts and other areas. Yeah. She may think that she's, uh, you know. But if you tell her it's in the interest of law-abiding biker media only and uh, that she smells great, she may try it. Yeah, I, I'm, and I could show her the link. It's a real thing, honey. We're, exactly. You know, I'm not playing a joke here. She could just listen to this. Well. And know it's legit. Yeah, I, I mean, everything can. we say is legit. I know you can get a two pack and get fresh balls and fresh breasts Ooh. all in order. Oh, you can. So, yeah, yeah. Go back to your link that you uh, go to fresh breasts, lawbitingbiker.com forward slash fresh breasts. And fresh dash see, breasts. So sorry. Thank you. Yes. Uh, you'll see there's a two pack of fresh balls and fresh breasts. So when I, there you go. Yeah. Oh, look at right the there? couples. Uh -huh. The couples, fresh body male, yeah. female bundle. 
So Dude. when I need to up, re up on my yeah. fresh balls, maybe I'll just order fresh breasts and then it'll all come at the same time. And honestly, I've seen you with your shirt off. You could probably use the fresh breasts and your <laughs> boob crack. <laughs> I could test them both. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. One for me. Try them, right. on, try them on the moobs. And try on the moobs. I, I think it'll work for the moobs too, guys. All right. All right. What do we got here? We got us a, uh, oh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do a voice. Yeah, let's do a voicemail. We got a voicemail. What do we got going on? I haven't even listened to it. Here we go. I just watched the uh, video for my Harley Davidson uh, touring Ignition switch, it was uh, acting up. Well, I changed handlebars, and and then it got all screwed up from there. Anyway, your video, I had to get into. I uh, wonder how it got screwed up, Lurch. Well, I can and tell and you Lurch is having works. flashbacks over here. He's <laughs> he's sweating listening. It's yeah. like it's like uh, trauma he has. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You get in a hurry yeah. and you don't pull the ignition straight out. You turn it a little bit on the way out, and then you get those. Uh, Cogs, Cogs misaligned or whatever, or whatever yeah, you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it, out of alignment, and then it doesn't want to go back in. And no, oh, it's a it's a shit show. We do appreciate uh, this gentleman's honesty on this voicemail. Your video, I had to get into it to realign everything. If it wasn't for your video, um, <clears throat> you know, I couldn't do it. Thank you. I am going to become a member. That's freaking awesome. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Did he give his name? He did not. Okay. So, uh, name redacted, NR. Uh, thank you very much. And we really appreciate the feedback. And we really appreciate uh, the uh, voicemails, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash contact. Leave a voicemail right there from your phone microphone, your computer microphone, free anywhere in the world. And uh, we love your. We love the v- emails. You can, same uh, place, you can leave an email. But uh, we definitely love also the app, uh, the lawbidingbiker.com uh, law forward slash app. We have our own app. We've had it for a long time. It is one of the best ways to consume our podcast. And right there, you can actually just call us and leave a voicemail, uh, just like a regular phone voicemail. There's a lot of other interactive stuff within that app too. Now, the video, you want to talk about that, Lurch, what he's referring to or whatever, and clean this up? I was in the middle of uh, producing the podcast. I was going to uh, mm. delete that note so we didn't use it again. Um, th- that you video? save that for after. Okay. We So we had a video out on how to realign your ignition. And it's one of those things that uh, every once in a while when we're working on stuff, we, we make mistakes. And by we, I mean me. And I uh, misaligned your ignition switch. So a lot of times when you're doing handlebar jobs and whatnot and you want to take off your inner dash panel, you need to... Did you say hand jobs? No, I did not. Handle Handle bar bar jobs. Oh, gotcha. And you want to remove your inner dash panel. You got to get that ignition out of the way. And it's actually fairly simple if you do it right. You use a um, little switch you push underneath and it it releases it. But your, your, uh, your switch has a shaft that goes down into the key or, you know, for lack of better words, the keyhole. And there's about three different rings that got to be all lined up to do certain things. And if you uh, remove your switch and uh, turn it a little bit on the way out you can misalign stuff and so um you took it apart years apart and you're probably here because you're doing a project on your sorry there it is there's the video and uh you two hundred thousand views yeah it's one what? of those things no it's a, it's a real pain point has it really been that long is it eight years ago no that can't be oh it. that's just a remove never mind no. all stall. right sorry 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 i sidetracked you keep keep going you I'm gonna sidetracked find me hard to believe yeah i know i'm you, gonna you see shiny things um 2015 is that it remove no, install? no that's what i just one. clicked uh, anyways you t- completely took it apart and uh figured out how it worked and made a really good video on how to uh realign it if you screw it up like i did i'm just searching our website uh there you go. We There's actually a did a podcast it, yeah. on it uh-huh. there, 239 or whatever. Yeah, here, Hardy Touring. 2019. 2019, I'm pulling yeah. up. So all I did, guys, if you're wondering, I literally did that on the fly, and you, we encourage you to do it too. I just went to lawbidingbiker.com. And uh, there's a really- so you're at all having oh, problems with your Hardy. Sorry about that. Uh, if you uh, just go to the search bar on our website, um, I just typed in Ignition Align. And we came up with a podcast article and then the video and an informational video and all that kind of stuff. So it's that easy. Um, so, yeah, we did talk about it on a podcast. And, uh, yeah. It's one of those cool things that in the moment. 190,000 views four awesome. years ago. That is crazy. 
the, because like, do that many people misalign their ignition? Cause honestly, you know what I mean? The only reason you watch this video is because, think. because you're misaligning your ignition, but maybe some guys are just generally interested, like how Could that be. whole ignition goes yeah, together. Absolutely. Just want to know, know how it works. I'm surprised by that number on that video. Wow. Every once in a while we have a little, little screw up in the, in the shop, but it leads to great content because yes. we never would have made a video like that if we no. didn't dick it up. No. So occasionally we come across stuff where we, 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 make a mistake and then we have to figure out how to fix it. And then we figure it's a real, this could be a pain point for people. It may mm. not be a common problem, but my God, if that, if you misaligned your ignition, there was no videos out on how we've to had a lot of apart. things on that video. Like yeah. you saved me. Absolutely. The, the, the only other option is just to take it off and replace your ignition. So that's what Hardy will do. Yeah. They will not dig into this. No, There's oh, no instructions. No. It's not in their manuals. No. I had to figure all this out on my own. Um, Cause I just want you to buy another $150 ignition. Yeah, absolutely. They're not going to take the time to take it apart and try to realign everything, um, which is why it's not even in their manual. So I'm sure some hard, I, I guarantee some Hardy dealerships have watched that video. Oh, probably. I guarantee yeah. some Hardy mechanics have and have figured out, oh, I can actually fix that. And ignition. I can charge more because it's going to take and, me a couple hours. So it's $300 exactly, to fix yeah. it. It's 150 to replace it. Absolutely. No doubt. Well, there you go. Thanks for the voicemail. Very much. Want to ride longer? Tired of a sore Nikki ass? Then fix it with a high quality butt buffer seat cushion. Head over to lawbindingbreaker.com forward slash store. Check out our full line of butt buffer seat cushions. Oh, yeah. Once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back. The Rick ultimate rack. motorcycle <laughs> luggage rack solution. Forget those messy straps from Bungie Gorge Ghost Trapless with a Rick Rack quick attached luggage system and quality bag. Head over to lawbindingbreaker.com forward slash store. Get hooked up now. And you know what? This episode is pretty much all about Zero 3D. We're going to talk about We quite got a bit. some Zero yeah. 3D stuff coming your way. So get skip, ready. Skip the uh, for that. Roll. Oh, yeah. There we go. Getting at it here. Now that we got a poem in us and we're, you know, we're in the biker consumption mood, we want to learn stuff. Most of all, this episode, we want to learn what we can do to make our bikes safer. Let us be seen a little bit. Anyways, welcome back, you freaking bike This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the big MM, also known as the 99%. Large and in charge of the motorcycle scene more than any time in history by being here, by listening, you're part of what we call the hashtag Biker Revolution. One question for y'all. What the hell are you waiting for? Mount up. And let us take you on another wild ass ride. There you go, Ryan Erlacher, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast and your high-tech redneck. Lurch on the mic there, as you guys know. It's just us two uh, here this evening. We're actually doing an evening one here to get some content out. Cause old school. It is old school. We've, Usually, yeah. We've gotten pretty good at uh, doing them on your days off. And uh, we just got, we've been busy, man. Uh this summer. And during the day on my days off. Yeah. Because we're working day, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were really busy this year and uh, it was just a busy summer for us and it was hard for us to get together. Usually we have nine or 10 of these things in the bucket, but <laughs> we've been doing a lot of video stuff. Uh, you, you did quite a bit of traveling this yeah. summer. Yep. And so just between uh, life and vacations and whatnot, it was, it, we, it's been getting hard to get together on your days off during the week that line up with my work days. So we're a little bit behind. And so we're going old school and uh, we're doing it in, at night after uh, work hours, which you know what? I don't mind because I have a whiskey sitting here. That is nice. Yeah. I got a beer. Although it was a long 10 hour, it was a 12 hour shift today. Oof and then now I'm going to do a podcast. Barely got home, got some food in me, but hey, I do have a beer in front of me, so I'm not complaining. Not complaining at all. Uh, all right. So, uh, this to okay. The main topic today is the importance of motorcycle lighting, and we've got some products and things we've tried and tested, and we've got some you know um, advice, maybe what we like best, what we don't like. Uh, anyways, we're gonna talk about that uh, in depth, and we're gonna recommend some products and a lot of the stuff either on our police bike, my police bike, um, some of it, and or. Uh, our personal bikes and a lot of what we've been using for quite a few years. So we can attest to its quality and things like that. So it's going to be a good episode. We've got a lot of content and information to throw at you. So hang on tight. Now uh, we do want to mention now this episode, we love our sponsors up front uh, and uh, our regular sponsors, but these folks are also a reason we're coming to you 
after you just you're doing another episode how many episodes did you say oh we're uh, before we're, we went recorded this one is going to be 349 but okay. i was just mentioning we're right at 350 and you th- if you think about all the uh uh, Sons of Anarchy ones that we Back did in the that, day. Yeah, that weren't numbered. They were just... Let's just say another 30 there or probably, something. I mean, we're getting close to or more. 400 total. total so I remember when we had our 100th uh, yeah. podcast and and uh, we, I, I went through a bunch of old audio and made some fun stuff and might have to do something big maybe for our 500th. Because yeah, no that's, that's not going to be that far away. God, dude. Isn't it crazy? 10 years. Yep. Going on. Yeah. 350. Crazy. And then... I don't even, YouTube's like 800 videos or something. It's insane. It might even be more and than that, I think. It, it might be. Yeah, I'll have to think, look at the count yeah, if I get should. a chance. I think you're pushing a thousand. Really? I think so. Holy cow, dude. Maybe. Yeah. I'll try to look if there's a downtime here. What we're saying though is the, you know, the the meaning behind that is obviously our patron, beloved patron members are, you know, we started that maybe two years in. So it's been going seven or eight years and they really are the backbone of what we do. And so we certainly want to thank some of our newest patron members. We'd like to thank Dennis Milford of Lawrence, Kansas, Ray Stockton of Republic, Missouri, and Susan Rogers of Burleson, Texas. Lawbidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, pledge a certain amount per piece of content. No risk to you because there are monthly caps that you can set there. Uh, there are many benefits such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group. Honestly, guys, it's huge. It's huge. It's great. It's the best. I'm telling you. Everybody knows it. It's Everybody true. knows it. It is uh, uh, nothing but bikers helping, helping and connecting with other bikers in there. It is a troll-free zone. I guarantee it. Uh, everybody's just trying to hang out and help each other in there. You get access to live video broadcast and chat. Podcasts like this, patrons are going to hear it up to two months before everybody else, depending on schedule. Uh, but you'll definitely get it early in the back end of your patron accounts. Access to uh, uh, premium videos up on request, of course, for your top tier. And, of course, access to those ride, meetup, and events. And you better believe, all I'm going to tell you right now is you get signed up ASAP uh, if you're at all interested in attending the 2024 uh, patron sanctioned patron meetup. Details we, to follow. Yes. We do one, uh, you know, sanctioned one. And the private Facebook group, those patrons are getting together all over and doing events. Yeah, it's amazing. About three or four. Is it, it now? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know when the last one was? It was just recently. Was they it? Had one in I don't Texas. know. Yeah. Okay. They just recently had one in Texas. I want to say within the last few weeks. Cool. So amazing. And so you definitely want to get signed up for the sanction, of course. And uh, yeah, details to follow. Uh, Hopefully within the, as we go into fall here, um, we'll line out exactly kind of what it's going to be. And then uh, sometime shortly after, we'll have a sign up form. It's going to come quick, guys, is all I can say. But I don't want to say anything more than that. But we are in the middle of... Uh, even today, some text messages mm-hmm. of we're working on trying it. to figure out what we're doing here. So there you go. All right, Lurch, do you want to start this? Since you uh, Lurch came up with this, uh, it's really his episode. Would we? Should we do um, the uh, free video before? Oh, we well, move let's into do it? that. Let's yeah, do let's that. do that. We uh, like Lurch said, tons of videos, maybe even a thousand on YouTube. Now I don't know. <laughs> I think you're close. Um, I'll see if I can just do that while yeah. you're talking about the new video. If I go for it. So our new free video, we uh, save these to announce them on the podcast. So this may have been out for a little bit, but uh, it's new to the podcast, and we want to make you aware of it. So it's called "Revving Into Tomorrow: Conquering the Future." Police Harley Roguelite on. A competition course. So, uh, as we've uh, announced in podcast and social media post and video, the Rogue Glide is now available uh, to law enforcement officers as a police motorcycle. And uh, you actually got your, the opportunity to jump on one and take it on the course. And I remember you telling me that uh, several of the, the motors officers from around uh, the area that were. Uh, there at the event, the NAMOA event, the National uh, Association of Motor Officers, right? No, no, yeah. uh, North American Motor Officers American. Association. Thank yeah, uh-huh. it was, uh, I always I see that, and I think there's too many A's in that. Anywho, uh, they you said the other guys just kind of take it in the parking lot and run around, maybe go out in the city streets and drive it around, but you actually took it on the course and put it through its paces. So, real cool video. Check that out. It's, yes, uh, link is in the show notes if you want to get to it. It's the easiest way. Coolio, lawbuddingbiker.com forward slash whatever episode number this is, is how you always get the show notes and everything we can talk. Or in your uh, podcast, whatever you're listening in, um, 
you know, whether it's iTunes or uh, Apple Podcasts or whatever, uh, you can uh, see the show notes in there too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm looking real quick to see. I it's so hard because they're always changing the analytics. Uh, I'll take a look while you're. That's all right. Doing your thing. No, I'm not doing my thing. You're starting this episode, so mm, okay. it's not that important. I can't find it. We'll find it later. But uh, yeah, you you wrote this episode, so why don't you uh, start it out? Well, you did some research and stuff, huh? Yeah, we so um, we've got a good relationship with Ciro, and uh, they came out with some new lights lately, and we hadn't talked about the the Ciro products other than doing their commercials uh, for a while. So I was really impressed with some of these new uh, lights that are available, and it got me thinking, um, especially going back to when I first started riding bikes. I wanted to be cool, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Uh, I wasn't so concerned. I'm just going to let you know you weren't. I know. But we thought we, we were. We thought we were. You know, when you <laughs> it's, first... It's all that counts, perception. Your, your first, own perception. Your first Harley, <laughs> you know, you get all the leather. Oh, yeah. You got your half helmet. You bandana. Got your bandana. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. your wallet with the chain hanging I'm hard. <laughs> I'm hard, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know, leather chain. Yeah, loud dude. as shit. All the know, Harley look shit. Look at me yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, as you continue to ride, and especially if you're getting into touring and doing long distance, you start realizing that... Uh, comfort is maybe a little more important than being cool. Mm-hmm, now, right. I try, I still try to find a happy medium. Yeah, right. You still want to be know? cool. Yeah. I still want to be a little cool. I still want to um, perceive myself as cool. But with the new bike, especially the 2014 and newer with the CAN bus stuff, man, there's so much easy plug and play lighting stuff that you can do. And Ciro's got some new stuff that came out. And uh, we've got a, a couple that are on back order. Hopefully, by the time this podcast is out, we've got them in stock. And then there's a new light that hasn't even been released yet. So we got a little bit of uh, information up front that we'd like to share and uh, some products we could talk about. Before we get into that, though, uh, I thought it'd just be important to talk about the importance of lighting. Uh, Not necessarily about being cool, but about being seen. And the thing about Ciro is they make a product that helps you be seen, but it also is cool. I'll go back to just... And we'll get to talking about some different lighting, but one in particular, I remember the the latitude taillight. Uh, mm-hmm. They sent us one, and uh, we needed a bike to put it on. And you're like, "Hey, can we put this on your bike?" And I looked at, I, I saw the picture of it, and I thought, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." I'm like, "That's too space age, man." I, we can put it on my bike. I'm probably gonna take it off, put the old stuff back on. And as soon as I put it on, saw it on the bike. I'm like, "Dude, that is badass." Uh, they've got some great. Uh, people over there that you know, come up with these products and make them streamlined and beautiful and functional. And uh, it's just what I'm trying to get to is that this lighting stuff can actually be cool as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Piggybacking off that a little bit, going back to what Lurch was saying, you know, remember when we first started, uh, you know, we we were rolling with Ciro. We hooked up with them when they were first starting that company. Yeah, And uh, we've been with them ever since, and they've been sponsors of the YouTube channel ever since, and, and this podcast for so many years now. Um, a lot of those products, people weren't used to seeing yet, um, especially Hardy guys, you know, because they make a lot, they make Indian too, but a lot of Hardy stuff. And guys were just used to the old square taillights. And so, like you said, at first we were like, you know, know. because it, it, now you know, however many years later, I don't think anybody even bats an eye because no, it's become commonplace, but you know what I mean? It yeah. was like, they were, ahead of the cha- curve. they were ahead of the curve. It changed the way we think about Hardy lighting and the look of Hardy lighting and the functionality and, and safety and, and things like that. So zero was really cutting edge when it came to that. Um, and I'm glad we uh, met those folks, awesome folks over there right away when they were getting started up as a company and we kind of helped launch um, them and, uh, and yeah, it's been an awesome relationship. So yeah. And they continue to add stuff, uh, to make their lighting innovative and uh, we'll talk about it, but, uh, you know, strobing and that kind of stuff and different patterns and whatnot. Yep. So why don't you dive in there? You did some research and we'll just go over some of this. Now I will say this, uh, up front, um, we're going to do a whole nother episode. This is really a deep subject. As I was preparing today, Alert had done the show notes. And so I, I dug in and added some things, um, but I really got a feel for it. And as I dug deeper and started going down a rabbit hole, I realized that there is a lot. There is a lot. Uh, so we're going to do a whole other episode, and I I titled it. It's coming up, guys. Probably do a video on this, too. I think so. Um, I think a talking head video and things like that. I have it titled, uh, Motorcycle Rider Safety, Clothing, Equipment, Paint, Lighting, 
everything. There's a lot to being seen yes. and uh, uh, not being involved in a collision. Exactly. Right. This, and, this episode's we're focused on lighting, but we'll do another one that focuses on everything that can help uh, make you conspicuous and make you less likely to get hit. Yep. Well said. That was exactly what I was going to say. Oh, thank you. That's where, that's where I was going. Oh. Uh, so perfect. My yeah, apologies. You, no, you did it for me. You did it for me. That's great. Um, all right. So with that said, we're going to dive in. We're going to stay out of the weeds there a little bit, but like Lurch says, we're going to dive into specifically some lighting things. If you want to kick that off Lurch. So you- yeah. I found a uh, national or and it's a National Highway Traffic Safety Administration uh, National Agenda for Motorcycle Safety, and was kind of looking at that because they were they talked about several things, but lighting was uh, very uh, prominent in that um, that uh, study. So one of the things they said was motorcycles who are conspicuous are underrepresented in crashes. And that's a fancy way of saying that bikes that are seen don't get hit. Right. Right. You know, right, some, exactly. Somebody, somebody with a PhD wrote that, and they had to make it a little fancier. Exactly, but, yeah. Uh, if you're being seen, you're not getting hit. So there's a lot right. of different things to that. Here we're going to focus on uh, lighting. Uh, a common- it's inter- interesting not to, just because this is obviously for a discussion point, mm-hmm. it's interesting that NHTSA did that. I I like to see the studies behind that. It's interesting that they said motor, motorcyclists are, who are conspicuous are underrepresenting crashes. So interestingly... I think of it, and you do too, being law enforcement, especially from a traffic law enforcement agency, Mm -hmm. and I do traffic full-time. When they go and make this this statement, like what makes it conspicuous? You know what I mean? I wonder how that data, I'm sure we're not going to figure out. How they collect that data. You know what I mean? Because when I I go to motorcycle collisions all the time, but I'm not collecting anything where there's no questions on my collision form that ask anything about lighting on a motorcycle. So I, you know what I mean? Are they upper uh, unre, uh, underrepresented? Cause it, that data isn't collected. It's it's fine. I just, I'm going down a rabbit hole here, but you know what I mean? I would like to see what's behind that lurch is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well now I'm looking at the, uh, <laughs> it's not there. I read it. Oh, did you already read it? Yeah. Okay. I read that whole thing. Uh, I, I went down a rabbit hole today and I was, it's very interesting stuff. Uh, we will, hopefully break it down, like I say, in the future, um, and maybe even that question. With that said, real quick, uh, I, I forgot to mention that- Well, they said it, it must be true. Right, exactly. That's it's what on, I mean. It's NHTSA on the internet. Said it. It's on NHTSA. <laughs> I mean, good God, yeah. Uh, so if you want to know, we already did actually, this is a really interesting episode, and we went in depth. Um, it was to episode 200, lawbitingbiker.com forward slash 200. And I went over motorcycle riding safety tips and dangers from a police motorcycle officer and instructor, me, of course. And I went over in detail. I remember making the notes for that. So if you want to know uh, things that I see every day, I ride every day in every kind of condition imaginable um, and uh, every kind of roadway imaginable from off-road to on-road. Anyways, a lot of good information over there, safety tips and dangers from my perspective. So lab, that's 200, episode 200. Sorry, go ahead. No, I had to ask my question. No, I'm glad you asked right. that you, by talking about that, you gave me a second to look. So you can actually click on the references that, mm. that, that they used. And there are about 20 different things that they use. So there's uh, several different studies and evaluations and collision evaluations and all kinds of stuff that they used to come up with this. Okay, nice. All right. Smart people, smarter than I moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, um, a common complaint of street riders is that other motorists fail to observe them. True. Motorists who violate motorcyclists right of way frequently say, I didn't see him or he came out of nowhere. I attest to that. Uh, when you've I go to motorcycle collision, yeah. you have to mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. every time. Yeah. If there's another car, it's that left turn fail to yield in front of them. Um, or, um, uh, more commonly, Unfortunately, is rear end accidents, which we're going to get into because of cagers and cell phones, smartphones. Yeah, and yeah. they're just and people are just used to looking for cars. Uh, yeah, obviously, a motorcycle is smaller, mm-hmm. single headlight, uh, smaller profile doesn't grab the eye as much. But there are things that you can do to help grab the eye of those cagers. Mm-hmm. Well said. So uh, those are common statements. Yes, very good. A variety of recognized tactics exist to make motorcyclists and their riders more conspicuous. Lighting, surface color, and size. 
and rider traffic strategy. Uh, and I think size right. matters. Size does matter. You know, what's contrary the, to popular, yeah. I know you, I know you've had some girlfriends, that, you know, felt sorry for you and said that size <laughs> doesn't matter. That is not true. <laughs> You're full of shit. <laughs> uh, without getting, cause we'll, we'll talk about this more in the other, the, the podcast where we really dive into all the different things, but the, the size of the motorcycle does. I started digging in fairing. Yeah, you know, I don't want to get, but yeah. oh, dude, it's it interests me. But fairings, yeah. lighting, and all yep. kinds of stuff. So sticking yep. to lighting, uh, some of the things that you can do to uh, make your bike more noticeable or stand out is to um, get lighting out to the outside edges of your bike mm-hmm. instead of everything tucked in around the headlight. So if you you know if you get your headlight, you get your turn signals out on your uh, handlebars. Mm-hmm. If you add things like. Tac 10s. We're going to get into all the different serial lighting options, but if you can make that lighting profile a little bit wider, a little bit taller, you're going to grab a lot more attention. Which brings up a good point. A lot of you, we always say, you know, like on my Dyna Lowrider S, you know, they put the signals right on the handlebars up high and they're ugly as shit. That's a good That's spot why. for them though. That's why, because yeah. they take they take stuff from the federal regulations mm-hmm. and they have to make bikes a certain way and signals have to be at a certain within certain height parameters, certain width parameters. You can change all that shit on your own like we did. Oh, yeah. Which isn't the smartest thing. No, we made it look cool. We, but we made it look <laughs> cool. It is a Dyna Lowrider S. Yeah. But we took the signals down and put them on the forks, um, and they're definitely not as far apart. But anyways, again, each to their own on that. I'm just trying to explain yeah, absolutely. You know, why they do that ugly shit sometimes. That's why. Yeah, I think about uh, a few years ago when we went to Sturgis and uh, Cowboy was, I think he was on his first or second ride uh, with the group and he still had his, uh, uh, he had a low rider, didn't he? Or Who? No, Sorry. A Cowboy. Cowboy? He had some type of. Uh, no, he had a, uh, wasn't it a Fat Bob? Mm, did maybe have, it was. No, did he have a Fat Bob? No, he. No. Anyway, some kind of. Yeah. Not a, not a a cruiser. Not it wasn't a, touring a bike. Yeah, it was a yeah. Can't remember now. Uh, and he had his uh, signals in the stock position up on the handlebars, and uh, he got a, a pair of the serial Fang LED inserts for his uh, bike. And when he put mm-hmm. those things in there, I could when I could see him in my mirror. Holy shit, that bike was so much more noticeable because yeah, of that, good point. That bright lighting up there, yeah. What you're looking at. Yeah, I was just I'm just oh. scrolling through this article, seeing if there's uh, uh, anything else that you you keep going. Okay, absolutely. Uh, so um, dip, up, up, up. so lighting factors include using the high beam of a motorcycle headlight during the day also helps prevent violations of the motorcycles right away. This is something they found in the study, and this is something that I didn't necessarily do until you turned me on to it. You ride around through high beam on all the time <laughs> yeah. of the day. I do. Yeah. And I yep. have adopted have that. Have you? Nice. Yes, I have. It makes a difference, mm-hmm. uh, especially on a police bike. Yep. And yeah. In fact, I'm so used to having it on that when I ride at night, I forget. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, get yeah. flashed. Uh, I've got the Rogue Light with the dual LEDs, and that sucker's pretty bright at night. So I'll jump on and take off and not even realize I got my high beams on because they're just always on. Interestingly, on that note, is the, like you say, I'm glad you've adopted that. Um, until today, till I started digging in those notes, I didn't realize there was actually any study on it. Mm. I just did it because I was like, it makes what, more I, sense. I don't, it makes sense, right? I'm trying to stay alive. Right. Uh, I ride a bike every day. And even though it's a police bike, people pull out in front of me daily, um, darn near daily. And, uh, there are some tickets, uh, given for such, uh, but, uh, um, yeah, it, you know, and so I figured why not have the high beam on? I really do think it makes a difference. So interesting that it's actually true. It, it you know? it's, it's one of those things that just makes sense. Right. right. It always made sense. But it's, ni- it's nice that there's a study that validates yeah, your, yeah. your thinking. Uh, so let's do this. Uh, now we're going to talk, I want to talk a little bit more about headlights, Lurch, but I want to okay. back it up just a little bit. Right. Um, we're going to talk about some lighting on the rear of the bike specifically um, at some point in this mm-hmm. episode. And we're going to give some products. But I will tell you this. So our police bikes, the one I ride every day, my Electra, my current bike's an 18. I have sitting a 2023. We're getting it ready to go. In fact, me and Lurch just on two of our new police fleet bikes, we did stage ones. We did an episode on that. Stage one kits, air intake, uh, headers and mufflers, and we tuned them, an EFI tuner. So that episode, uh, look forward to that. I don't even know if it's out as of the time of this 
Didn't we do an episode on that? Yeah. Yeah. It oh, doesn't yeah. matter if it's, it's, right. out. it's out. Okay. You it's should out. know you edit yeah, it. All right. <laughs> I know you're like me. Ah, I have four <laughs> videos. I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyways, uh, on a those. Fun, a fun day in the, in the yes. shop, by the way. Yes, it yeah. really was. A Good fun times. three days. Yeah. Was it two, two? Two. No, we did three. I think it was three. Yeah, we did three. Yeah. Anyways, backing up what I was getting to on the, the rear lights. So on my 2018, um, the police spikes come with, and it flashes the brake light. So when I hit the brakes, it just flashes. It's real uh, inconspicuous. It's it's not super in your face. It's just like three little bumps of the brake real quick. And they're really fast, but it's better than nothing. Um, but I'll tell you guys, and I do it all the time. It's like, I don't even know I'm doing it because I've ridden so many years every day to keep from getting rear-ended. Um, and so I'm I'm always obviously without getting into, I talk about that in, in the 200th episode about so, some of what I do there, but lighting specifically um, before I coming up, I'm tapping and I'm manually getting, fashion. I manually yeah. keep hitting it. Cause I know every time I hit the brake lever foot or hand, it's bumping three times. And so then when I stop at an intersection and maybe there's not a car behind me yet, but I see cars coming eventually, I'm constantly like every three seconds, I'm grabbing the lever and I'm letting go of the lever and I'm grabbing the lever until I realize in my mirror, because I'm watching them to make sure that they're slowing. If they don't look like they're slowing, I'm going to look for an escape route. But uh, I'm doing that all the time. I'm pumping my brakes on and off so that I can keep that triple bump. Okay, so the new 2023 bikes um, don't have that, the new police bikes. They didn't have that. So, or there's a way to program it, and we're not aware of it yet. So you're, um, because I I was not aware of that. I, I know that we added some stuff to your new, these 2023s for your agency to 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 modulate and do that stuff. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize your 2018 gave a three yeah burst very quick burst. It's not like the zero, you know. And, but it's it, not that's defined, all stock it's just, Harley stuff. Yes. Uh no. The 2018. Well, they're police lights. Okay. Um, and they put the that trunk light. So oh, it's part of your trunk. It's light. part of the okay. police right. package gotcha. kit, but it's all OEM. Right. It's all from Harley. Came yes. from the factory like that. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. And so, why the twenty twenty three bikes? They didn't do that. We're not sure. Yeah. Um, so, we actually, uh, which I think we have down there, we're going to tell you what we did in a little yep. bit to mm-hmm. the twenty twenty three bikes. What was our choice for the police bikes based on the way they're set up? And we do have some lights back there that are going to grab people's attention a lot more, which I'm satisfied with because I'm not happy. The 18s, I, like I said, I get by with it. I tap, I break. But these bad boys that we put on from Ciro are going to get some damn attention. And uh, I'm pretty stoked about it. But we will uh, talk about that um, at, when we get down here and we actually get into a little bit more products. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, let's move on from their alerts, but let's do this real quick. Ride longer and treat your ass with some respect already. Oh my. Get hooked up with a premium butt buffer seat cushion. This company of bikers developed a super thin hospital grade seat cushion made of solid and elastic materials, and it's unlike gel pads that will leak if punctured. He's got a smile. The butt He's buffer smiling. is designed my not ass. to slide around your seat. Fits on more cycles and stalls in seconds, easily cleans up, and yep, helps to dampen those damn vibrations. Oh my god, those vibrations. There's like plenty of miles to choose from. They assure you'll have a comfortable ass when riding. Head on over to the Law Binding Biker Store and check out our full line of butt buffer seat cushions. That was pretty well done, Lurch. Thank you. <laughs> and we're fully stocked. <laughs> yeah, are we? fully stuck yeah, nice yeah yeah nice bro uh that was that was impressive thank you usually i can get you to crack i didn't you I, cracked at the start a little bit that's, that's why i looked away from you because <laughs> it's not what you you're were saying making it's not what you're saying it's a dumb look on your face when you're doing it <laughs> you're so proud of yourself <laughs> god dude it's too much fun all right uh yeah the butt buffer and lurch has been spent a lot of time at the store facility um, I'm a so shelf building fool. You are, dude. Did you build any more today? Uh, not today. I got them all done yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. So all the shelves are up in the uh, storage and shipping area, and uh, we're continuing to build out the uh, storefront. Very mm-hmm. exciting. Nice. So Lurch is in the know when he says they're in stock. Yeah, He's I the do. man. Yeah. He saw them today probably. Uh-huh. So very, very well. Uh, all right. So uh, moving on, uh, we stopped right here. So recently, some automobiles have started using talking about headlamps, Mm -hmm. getting back on that. We obviously, we know high beam is good, um, but some automobiles have started using daytime running 
lamps, which are called, they call DRL, which may reduce the effectiveness of motorcycle automatic on headlamps. And what they're saying there yeah, is that cars to, are using them now. Yeah. It used to just be motorcycles. Uh, I can't remember when it was it's probably in the study there somewhere. Oh, 79, 1979. From then on, uh, motorcycles are supposed to have daytime running lights, if you will. The headlight's supposed to be on when you're riding. And uh, yep. I, it's been years, but if for quite a while, uh, more, or cars have been using those. So now they're saying that it may diminish the um, having your headlight on. So one of the things you could do, we talked diminish about earlier. Diminish because people are used to it. They're used to, seeing, saying, a, right, yeah, they're right. used to seeing a yeah. light it in the daytime. It doesn't stick out as much. It doesn't grab their attention as much as it used to. But one of the things you could do to mitigate that, we talked about already, is turn your high beam on, make it even brighter. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Exactly. Exactly. Um, so this is kind of where I went down a rabbit hole today a little <laughs> yeah. bit, which is good. Yeah, I'm glad you, I saw you added a whole bunch of stuff. Because I've been asked about it before, and I knew the answer, um, but it's been so many years since I looked any of this stuff up. Um, but obviously, I get asked traffic questions. So sure. here, this is solid information here for all of you out there. And I think we've even maybe even asked this question in a roundabout way uh, right here at Law Binding Biker Media. So we're going to get into headlight modulators. Um, and you guys know what that is that, you know, going down the road, your, uh, headlight flashes on and off constantly. Um, yeah, it kind of, it, pulsates. Not, I, yeah, pulsates. There you go. That's a good word for it. Not necessarily on and off, but definitely pulsates. It, pulls. <laughs> <laughs> it, it goes dim, bright, dim, bright, dim, bright. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So headlight module modulators are, I'm going to back this up. Okay. So all, all you guys, this is for the U S by the way. This is not for Canada. This is not for the rest of the world, not even North America. This is the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations. Headlight modulators are federally regulated lighting devices. And as such, all state laws governing them are preempted. So obviously here in the U.S., we have federal law, and then each state can have their own laws uh, too. All right. Now, Motorcycle headlights modulators have not been studied to determine their effectiveness on other motors, which is interesting. Uh, that would be an, I'm surprised they haven't done that study, but let's go back to all States laws governing them are preempted. So I, uh, I know what it means, but I actually, uh, got a definition because it's easier for me to explain. But if you don't know what preempted is basically a higher authority of law will displace a law of the lower authority of law when the two authorities come into conflict. So federal law, preempts anything the state's doing on um, on modulators. So basically, they preempt all states. So they're basically saying, fuck off states. Uh, our law is the law of the land, uh, as far as that goes. Yeah, that's a good enough. Great way of putting it. Okay. Basically saying that uh, that wasn't the actual the fuck wasn't in there. No, um, <laughs> no. They're saying that to, in this in this particular instance, they're yes. saying headlight modulator modulators are legal for you. So and don't try states, to restrict it. You can't restrict it anymore. You can because be, in the U S you can be less can restrictive. Be, yes. C- states can be more restrictive and they often are in Washington's a lot more restrictive. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they can be less restrictive, but not more restrictive. No, they can be more restrictive. If you look at article one, section seven of the U S constitution is more restrictive than the fourth amendment of the federal constitution. We can be more restrictive. Your right to privacy is more restrictive than the federal, than the constitution here in Washington. It, Particularly in this one, though. Not preempted. I'm just saying in general, okay. states can be more restrictive. They can have more restrictive state laws than federal laws, unless it's preempted. Gotcha. Okay. There you go. Right. Yeah, okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to get, uh, uh, yeah, with the with the word preempted. Yes. But generally speaking, we have a, we're really restrictive in Washington right. compared to federal law. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there you go. Uh, if you didn't know what all that means. So here I'm going to back it up. So FMVSS 108, that's the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. It's 49 CFR, Code of Federal yeah. Relations, Part 571.108, S79.9.4. And then we you, have RCWs. You, you thought the RCWs were trying to revise codes of Washington, in the Washington law. You thought, as an officer, if you thought those were hard to oh, um, keep track of, the, oh my God, the, the, uh, um, CFRs are insane. They are. They and you are, dealt with them a lot. I did. In, in the commercial cor- vehicle division. Yes. Oh my God. Because everything's code of federal regulations. they're constantly changing. Yeah. Just reading through this one, it took me like 30 minutes until I pulled the section of the picture I took yeah. to find the subsections that I needed and make sure they made sense. It's horrible. Um, but that particular CFR allows motorcycle headlight modulation systems in all 50 states, provided they comply with the standards set forth in the section. 
So I've got a link in here and Lurch will put it in the show notes directly to the code of regulations that concerns this. Um, So if you want to read it for yourself so you don't have to spend as much time as I did trying to find it, uh, we will put that. And then hopefully, Lurch, you can put a uh, picture. I know you will because you're going to be editing this and listening to this. This is actually a picture that you can put of the actual, that that particular code is freaking long. So I just took out the section that we needed, which was the um, whatever the this the S seven nine nine point four. Yeah, so you got, you got it all there. I can find it. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah. Basically, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the um, a headlamp, a motorcycle may be wired to modulate either the upper beam or lower beam for its maximum intensity uh, to a lesser intensity. Provided that I'm not going to read all these, but the rate of modulation shall be 240 plus or minus 40 cycles per minute. I mean, it gets specific. The headlamp shall be operated a minimum power of 50 to 7% of each cycle. The lowest intensity in any point must not be less than 70% of the maximum intensity measured by the same point. So see what we're saying about CFRs. Yeah. Anyways, they're basically saying it can't be, it, you can't cause somebody to have like a stroke or something by right. <laughs> flashing or too bright or too quick or something. Yeah cannon on yeah. the front you know they must have done some type of testing i would assume to figure out what uh is reasonable that yeah. doesn't affect other motors we would hope we hope we would I mean, hope why else would you come up with those many right uh, specifications because it's pretty it, it gets pretty specific in here yeah but what um you guys need to know on that without getting you know going down a rabbit hole there is basically if you buy a headlight modulator of some sort, it's going to say on the package that it's federally under this RCW or not RCW, the CFR. And it's going to say DOT or something approved. SAE, US, DOT, DOT SAE, SAE yeah. approved. So make sure if you get a modulator, um, I can't believe, I can't imagine any legitimate company is selling a modulator that's not within specs because I wouldn't think so. They could get sued so bad by you if it was not approved and it was doing some weird light pattern and then you got in a wreck or caused somebody to get in a wreck it would be really bad so just uh you know be be diligent and just make sure you're not buying from some freak on ebay that you know has a two-star review and (laughs) something you know just i would get a legitimate headlight modulator um honestly lurch uh, I've never run one, and I, I don't. Never I've either. never had rode with anybody else who has run one. But I, I don't even see them. It seemed like twenty I years ago they were popular. I saw a lot of bikes with them, and now you just don't see them no. that often. I wonder why that is. Uh, you know, I occasionally see. I'll see one on a Goldwing or maybe a, a European bike occasionally. I think they just kind of fell out of uh, style. Um, they're going back to the cool factor uh the the brake modulators when you hit your brake and they flash a few times uh totally cool going down the road with your headlight going up and down the whole time is it's i don't know i think most people find that to be odd yeah or not, or not appealing i just think they i wouldn't mind trying i don't know why i haven't tried it i don't know i wouldn't care yeah i don't know i'm not I as cool as you though yeah, that's I'm not true. as cool as you. That's true. I'm just going to admit it right here. I don't know. They, I think they just fell out of style. It, and I, I, I don't, and I've definitely not seen it to be something on American-made V-twins very right. often used on V-twins. I'm not even seeing on the metrics. Not even the police uh, BMWs. No, it's like I, I, just, I don't see it much. I, I, I don't know when the older, last time. They're almost older bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Gold Wings, I think, and, yep. and uh, European bikes. That's just based on my observations. Here's what I'll say. If you're a listener and you're out there and you've used a headlight modulator, um, a pulsator, if you've used a pulsator at any point in your life, <laughs> uh, anyways, serious note, please, lawabidingbagger.com forward slash contact. Let us know what you used, where you got it, and uh, how you like it, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'd be uh, curious and to, to hear back. So, uh, yeah, hit us up now. This is, so oh. I had to do a quick little search as you were talking, and uh, this is a forum. I'm not going to mention which one, but the guy says, does anyone make modulated LED headlights for the road glide that are 50 state legalized, defined by mo- for federal motor vehicle safety standards? And he put the, the number in, in there and everything. So uh, let me see who this was. Oh, it was Ryan Erlacher that put this post in. Oh, I no, no. I'm okay, I was going to say, what are you talking no. about? Okay. I was like, wait a minute, freaking me no, out. No, freaking I just put out. modulators in there, yeah. and I was looking at it, and it took me to this thread, made me laugh. But so you know, people are looking to do it, but it's just not. It's very infrequent. I think yeah. I don't see it very often anymore. 
I know. I would be curious, like I say, uh, some feedback on that. Now, to clean this up, the preemption, we already said uh, right here, Title 49 USC 30103B, as in boy one, U.S. codes prohibits any state from forbidding a system that conforms to FMVSS 108, which is what we just read you. So there's your- uh, Federal Motor Vehicle Safety something. Federal, yeah, safety standards. There you go. There you go. So there you go. That's the right there uh, in writing is your preemption. So uh, yeah, so that's weird because- it's very rare that uh, uh, you know a code like this is is preempted, and for all fifty states, there's not a ton of them. Um, most traffic laws are uh, you know within the state, like us is the Revised Code of Washington, and uh, some of it's based off CFR, and then we do our loose interpretation. But there's a lot of other, and then you've got some city municipal codes that get even more <sighs> restrictive. So I'm sitting thinking as we're talking, and I wonder if more people are. Uh, concerned with being hit from behind and then uh, having their right of way infringed upon. Now, obviously, they shouldn't because they, there's they more. Be. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But I'm just thinking, logically speaking, if you're a writer, are you more afraid of somebody hitting you from the rear when you can't see it versus somebody hitting you from the front where maybe you have an opportunity to get out of the way? Well, you should see it. You should be looking in your mirrors at all I, times. I understand. Okay. I know that 100%. Yeah. You should see 100%. it coming. I'm yeah. just talking about nature you know human nature and, right and uh there's one that you feel that you might be able to control more you know uh stuff in front of you versus stuff behind you and what's your point on that my point is is that maybe people are more uh concerned about being hit from the rear so having lights more lighting in the rear oh, flashing gotcha. makes more sense versus maybe that's why we're not seeing the modulating headlights so much anymore the people are less concerned about what's in front of them because they feel like they're more in control with what's in front of them versus wasn't behind them. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, just, it's a, just throwing it out there. Things that make you go. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, uh, you should be more concerned about what's in front of you statistically. Yeah. 100%, 100%. But yes. I'm just telling the audience yeah, that because yeah. we know that mm -hmm. um, from our background. But yes, I will tell you that, it, yeah. Um, the most frequent accident, you know, is the car turning left in front of you. That's, right. uh, you know, um, or pulling out from a driveway, uh, you know, where people stop and wave them out you know, or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's always going to, it's usually going to be that. Um, but there are plenty of rear end accidents. Uh, Lurch, uh, in fact, has uh, been yes. rear ended. Got, got um, rear and not just on Saturday nights in the alley. <laughs> no, um, uh, on Maui. And yeah, yeah. At Maui. Was it in an alley? No, in okay, Maui. This, I know. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Saturday night and in the that. alley. Yeah. No. <laughs> that's, that's where Lurch gets rear ended. Anyways. Yeah. So you're familiar with, uh, uh -huh. you know, the danger of that. Um, all right. So, uh, let's dive in here a little bit deeper and then we're going to talk about some of the products. Okay. Um, so we covered modulators. Yeah. Rear end accidents are common and, uh, yeah, uh, let's do this. So many, let's clean this up and then we're going to get into the products. Many modern street bikes are equipped with position running lamps in their front or the, your running lights, guys, or rear turn signals. This mm -hmm. may help other motorists to identify a vehicle as a motorcycle and to better judge its distance and speed. We've talked about that a little bit. Few motorcycles have more than single point rear lighting, um, though multiple lights at the rear would seem to offer similar benefits and also provide redundancy for the single tail light. Um, and again, we're going to do a whole nother thing, but high vis clothing um, is one. You know, I on duty I wear high vis shirt sleeves, um, and, and uh, it catches attention. Yeah, that that color uh, is that is that a green, or yellow, some I something forget what between. they call it. It yeah. is bright, high vis it's yellow, high -vis. or yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's all the construction workers, all everybody. Wear. It's like it's something in between yeah, there a yellow go. and a green. It's really bright. That shit grabs your attention when you see it, and so does that uh, two tone helmet, the black and white helmet, it grabs attention. Okay, as yeah, well. yeah. So what do we all wear when we're going down the road yeah. on our Harleys? Black. This is part of the. Yeah. If I yeah. did some deep research today. That's part of it. And how many helmets are sold that are dark compared to when they shouldn't be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There were the, I, it's going to be a fun episode oh, when we do that. Because it, it, be it, it gets deep. I didn't realize there was as much research as it was done. Um, so yeah, the high vis, like Lurch says, does stick out good. Let's do this and then we're going to dive yeah. into some products. 
Are you searching for the easiest and quickest detachable luggage system for your motorcycle? Rick Rack. Rick Rack. Has just what you're looking for. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that come loose and slap your paint. Check out one of Rick Rack's awesome quick attach strapless luggage rack systems. This father and son team designed something really special you can't find anywhere else. Yep, these guys ride. So they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack quick attach system is strong, durable, and secure with a lockable system. Also, check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your quick detach system. Once you use a Rick Rack, Rick Rack. You'll never go back. What are you waiting for, Bike Hogs? Head on over to Law Abiding Biker Store and check out our full line of Rick Rack systems and bags. LawAbidingBiker.com forward slash store. And when we said earlier, size does matter, I'm just going to throw it out there. A Rick Rack bag is big. It's on the back of your bike. Thus, it's a safety thing. Little did you know your Rick Rack was going to be a safety thing until this episode. The more bulk, the more mass you have. The more the ladies like you. I mean, the more safe you're going to be. More people see you. On Those cagers your see you. Motorcycles. There you go. Edit, 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 Lurch. It's beer time. I want to oh, run and get excellent. a beer. I might leave this in. <laughs> <laughs> Probably will now. <laughs> yeah, <why not? laughs> I need to bring a bag of ice. Your ice is pathetic. Oh. Try to remember that next time you come out. <laughs> I won't remember it. I haven't drank a whiskey out here for a while. You know what I mean? Try to remind me or Snowballs. or grab one or yeah. try to remind me. Just grab one, throw it in there. Well, it's not too often we do them in the evenings. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's why I forgot. Have a whiskey. That we even had ice in there. In the morning. I used to always have fresh stuff because we used it. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day when we used to do these at night. All right. So edit, 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 lurch. We're going to pick it back up here. All right, so we are going to break down some rear and front lighting, and Lurch is going to do a lot of this because he's very familiar with these products, and uh, um, I mean, I am too, but uh, yeah, we're just going to keep it succinct, and these are some of the, now there's a lot of different rear lighting, and remember this, guys, if, you know, in our store, we carry a lot of Ciro stuff, and uh, um, not everything, though, but, and we appreciate a lot of our members and listeners and supporters all you got to do is head over to our store, hit the contact form. If you look on our store and you're like, I need this, this, and this from Ciro, we're still, we'll sell it to you. We'll send you an invoice. You pay, we ship it to you. Um, we have access to anything Ciro. It's just, um, we're adding stuff over time, but we don't have everything, especially uh, we have a lot of the hot top seller stuff. So anyways, just a reminder of that, but everything we're listing today, we do carry, right? Yes, Lurch. And if there's something that you want that we don't carry, we will get it. Uh, we sell at the same price that Ciro does, and we have free shipping over $100. Mm-hmm. Just throwing that out there. Also, just a little note, um, you know, unless you live in Washington State, you don't pay tax. That's yeah, it's true. And that's perfectly that's legal mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, because we just don't have the volume. Um, uh, so, yeah, with us, you get a little bit of a break there, too. Washington, we have to because we operate out of Washington State, but we're not going to get into that uh, whole mess. But, uh, yes, there you go. We don't mention that often. No, that's true. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Did you uh, forget something? No, I oh, didn't. I was, right. I was waiting for you to. Okay, gotcha. I gotcha. don't know. Anyways. Anyways. So we got several different options for the rear. Um there's some new stuff that we want to talk about, and uh, I think I had it organized a little bit differently, so let me look here. Uh, so one of the things that uh, we can add to the back of the bike, you we put it on your bike. It's called the Serial Crown Tail with Light Strike Technology. Uh, this is for the, the street glides and the road glides. This crown tail light sits on top of the uh, bar that's between your... Uh, two um, brake run bullet turn signals, lights, bullet signals mm-hmm. on the back, and uh, it uh, it has light strike technology. So, to, to, so talking about the light strike in particular, it's the technology that allows you to have animations and uh, different uh, effects when you're hitting your brake and your turn signal and whatnot. So, if you've got a uh, street glide like. Ryan does. He's got 2014 Street Glide, and he's got just two turn signals back there. Now he's added the Fang, Serial Fang uh, turn signal insert. So you already had a little bit brighter action going on out back there, but but now you can add this uh, crown tail light that acts as a strobing brake light, and it's got it's got some cool stuff. You can you can have animations where you turn on your 
your bike and it makes a little signal. Uh, it's got uh, different brake animations. So when you hit your brake, you can get something from as simple as three flashes to, you know, five flashes to different patterns. You can speed them up, slow them down. And then one of the things that's really cool about it is if you hold on to your brake lever, it'll do animations as well. So very good attention grabber. Nice. And if you guys want to see, uh, you know, you can go to the YouTube channel, any of these products, you can search our website. You can just hit the search bar on the YouTube channel. But the best way, if we've done a video yet, uh, and even in the future, on any of the products that we talk about, you can just go to the store listing. Lurch is going to link all of this in the show notes to oh every Lord. product we talk about. That's going to be a lot of links. That's fine. Uh, well, you said it, so now I have to do it. I know, dude. I know. You yeah, did, well, you did that on purpose, didn't you? I did. I did, dude. Um, but that'll basically, uh, if there, what I was getting at is if there's a video on installation and about them and a review and how they look, it's going to be on our store listing. Any videos we do on any of our products in our store, if there's a video on it, you just go to the product listing, scroll down to the bottom of that page, and there'll be one, two, three, some products. We've done four videos. Mm -hmm. We keep adding them. We always embed the videos there for you. So um, if there's not a video there, it simply means we haven't done one yet, but you can guarantee it's coming soon. Mm -hmm. I would say that uh, almost all of our lighting, serial lighting uh, products have a video. Pretty damn close. I wouldn't say- All those very popular, popular ones for stuff, sure, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So another thing you can do for the back of your bike, um, and this is like the, by far the easiest and the quickest thing to do. First thing you should do in my First opinion. thing, 100%. Don't have to have any mechanical skills. I mean, Shit. literally so easy. We did a video on it, yeah. Shit can those Harley Davidson incandescent bulbs. I can't on your, believe. On your signals, your bullet signals. Yes. I can't believe that in 2023, some of the bikes are still coming out with incandescent bulbs. It's I know. insane. It is. So the turn signals, the run brake turn on the street glides, road glides, road kings, the front turn signals, a lot of those are incandescent bulbs. You can switch out to the Ciro uh, Fang LED inserts, front and rear. And on the Plug rear- Plug and play, pop them in, guys. Oh, it's super easy. All you just pop, it, we, we show you, we got a video. Go on the website, yep. check it out. We'll show you how to do it. Uh, but uh, the, the rear is a run, turn, brake. So you got your red light when you're going down the road, hit the brakes, they light up, turn signals left and right. On the front, what's really cool is the run light is white. So you got a white light, and then you hit the turn signal, it turns yellow, amber. Uh, that white light on those LED uh, fang inserts actually add quite a bit of filler light. Yep. It's amazing. And to be seen like what we're talking about. Yeah. You got three lights, white lights up front now instead of one headlight. It's a real attention grabber. It shows grabber. some width to your bike, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and another thing they do, it's kind of clever the way that they work. So uh, in particular, the the front lights, uh, they're white when you're going down the road. You hit your turn signal, they turn yellow. They pause for a second, and then the white comes back on. They're mm -hmm. very attention-grabbing. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. If you guys are not, you got to run with fangs, guys. I'm serious. Like, the first thing, you got to pop the incandescents. They're dangerous. They they can't be seen very well. If you can't do anything, um, at least start and just get fang signals up front fang signals rear again link will be in the show notes pop them in it'll take you less than five minutes to install all of them you have just literally increased your safety and ability to be seen like tenfold yeah, at least they're super and bright. for the price of that guys i'm telling you i mean i know that everything costs money but I'm just telling you, you're on a bike. If you can't do anything else, that's where I started. This is the one. Yeah. This is the one. And then in the future, if you can do a crown tail light, cool. But I'm telling you, uh, you got to do the fangs. And these are a hot seller. There's a reason. We just told you why. They're easy. They're something that you can do that's going to get you seen. And we always have those bad boys in stock, black or chrome. They come in, right? Yep. Anything else about them? There are other companies as far as your that make, variants. Yeah. No, no, they're black or chrome, front and rear. There are other companies that make uh, LED turn signals, but the difference is, is theirs are generally just a, uh, a, a amber, red, you know, turn signal. Uh, in the front, they're amber, and you, you hit the flasher, they, they're amber. In the back, they're rear. They're in the rear, they're red. Hit your turn signal, they're red. Um, they don't have the the white running running light, so they're not as bright, and uh, they don't have the style. Um, right, it's true. It's just that a fang look. Yeah, you got to look at them how they kind of have a lip at the top. They just 
they give your bike a really good look. They change the look of the bike instead of just having that boring uh, plastic uh, cover that the the stock headlights have. It changes it to a chrome bezel or a black bezel. Yep, it gives it a very nice look. It looks like a fang. That's the name. And uh, yeah, and also, guys, don't forget. Uh, you know, I know uh, money can be tight, and uh, you know everything everything costs. I realize that you got to choose what you put on your bike, what you don't. Safety obviously should be paramount. Cool factors in there too. You know, the loud exhaust that can also is a huge safety issue. Um, you know, loud pipes save lives again, whole nother episode on that, but don't forget in our store. Um, if you're, you know, having some troubles right now, or you don't have the coin, but you want to get them, we do have shop pay installments integrated right into the law abiding biker store. So if you want any of this stuff and you want to make four equal payments, interest free, we do have that option it's right in there for checkout just a reminder to everybody you guys asked for that and we implemented it some time ago lurch so now getting into some of the new stuff that Sarah's come out with they've come out with the latitude taillight with light strike technology i explained the light strike before the latitude taillight's been out for a while i put one on my 2015 road glide several years ago great looking bike i talked about it being you know space age at the time but man what a beautiful looking light but now it's got the light strike technology so it grabs your attention with all the different animations for yep, the brake strobe app. and yeah. everything yep yeah exactly so you use the app you can get on there you can you can customize yeah. it and we have a video showing you guys when we did my crown tail lights pretty specific um yeah just all the different things we're not yeah gonna get into that we'll do it in the video but yeah it's amazing the what you can program that thing to do so there's that was only available for the road kings street glides and road glides, but now it's available for the ultras and the elect. No, well, ultras. Yeah, electras. Ultras and limited. Yep. And which so, are electras? Yeah. Yep. So we just put one on Oscar's bike a few days ago, and man, he's so excited about that thing because he likes it. Yeah, he huh? does. Yeah, because he had a uh, 2021 CVO Ultra, and we put some. Uh, bag blades which we'll talk about a little bit later on his bike and those bag blades and that latitude tail light together just it gives that bike some dimension yeah. and really grabs your attention even the cvos just aren't coming with great rear lighting no it's just i mean it's standard i mean there's They've just got stuff up in the the, yeah. the trunk but as far as down below on the fender it just got that old square tail light the old school tail light yeah like your police bike yeah right right uh, so another one that's coming out, uh, we're getting ready to install this on Cowboys Bite, is the lighted license plate frame. So it's a little more affordable option than uh, the allowed to taillight if you're being budget conscious. Mm-hmm. You can replace your uh, license plate frame on your street glide or your road glide. Now you're going to add lights to the side of the frame. Uh, almost c- kind of a mini version of like a filler side of the panel. license plate frame. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So kind of a, a mini version of a, a filler panel, if you will. It's going to add some some lights to both sides of your license plate, and they run turn brake. It'll be a good addition to your bullet style. Do they have any light strike? No, they do not. Okay, so just signals brakes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of uh, light strike, before Lurch moves on here, uh, light strike technology. One thing I want to mention: there are a plethora like we said, of options as far as what kind of pattern when you turn your bike on, what kind of brake pattern, what kind of signal pattern, when do you want it kind of directional um, or just flashing or bumping. One of the coolest things about the light strike technology, I talked about it earlier in this episode, is what I manually do on my police bike. So I told you guys, you know, I'm sitting in an intersection, I see cars come up behind me, I'm pumping the pulsating the brake myself. So I, I get the three bumps, I let up on it, I wait a couple seconds, I do it again. One of the things mini program things into the light strike is you can do it. So um, let's say you hold your brake lever down. You don't have to do what I do. You just hold your brake lever down and then you can program it to, you know, two seconds, three seconds, five seconds, eight seconds, however you want for it to start its cycle of bumping and strobing again. So you don't have to be letting up, pulling down, letting up, pulling down. You literally stop an intersection, you know, however you program it every so often, it's going to be bumping that. Um, So that's a really cool uh, delay program um, that you can put in there. So I just wanted to tell you guys about that, um, yeah, it's which we have on our police bikes, which we're going to get to. I'm super stoked about. Although we didn't program it for that, for police bike, just because of some other 
reasons um, because we're emergency bikes. We didn't want people to think there's an emergency. Right. But anyways, uh, I'll have to, but we can program it for that. And we did just to check it out. So yeah, they're light strike, awesome technology. Yeah, it's an easy app to use. It's an animation that when you're holding your brake down, it'll flash automatically for you. So you don't have to- Whatever manually, pattern you yeah. set it for. So you don't have to manually do it like yes. you were talking about. It just, want, you hit your brakes and it does its animation when you hit your brake lights. And then when you hold it, it's got what they call a cool down period. Yep. So two, four, three, six, eight, whatever. I think I set mine to like three seconds. After yeah, you did brake, set yours, yeah. It just starts doing an animation. So it grabs people's attention. And it just does it still. over and over. Yeah. Until you let up on the brake. And then, yep. then there it goes you go. back to run. Yep. Uh, so another, uh, okay. So another one I'm really excited about. We just did this on my bike. It's called the Taylo, T-A-I-L-O, Taylo light for tour pack. Uh, we got some coming in hopefully here, but by, by the time this podcast comes out, they should be shipping. Uh, it's a new product, but it's an attention grabbing light, uh, that you put on the perimeter of your tour pack. And, um, it works with the 2014, uh, 2014 and newer Harley Davidson touring models with the chopped or King uh, tour pack luggage. Now, what we found out is that I have an aftermarket, uh, trunk. So as long as your aftermarket trunk is, uh, the same shape and design, the same mold, same mold, size, yeah, same everything. Yeah. It'll work with it. And so it's, it, it, it actually adds a lot of light to like an ultra, but for me with a detachable tour pack, my, I bought a, a road glide special and then turned it into an ultra, I guess, if you will. Once I got the tour pack and put it on, I find myself very rarely taking it off mm -hmm. uh, just yep. because the extra luggage space is nice. Cause you got junk in your trunk. I do have junk in my trunk. Just saying, you know, I've got all my, uh, my, you know, my, my, I got my cruise tools. Oh yeah, buddy. First you aid know, kit. Got my first aid kit. That's right. I got my heated gear, I got my mm -hmm. bug slide, Atta I got boy. my gloves, my hats or whatever, my rain gear. So my saddlebags are pretty full. My tour pack is usually empty. That's what the backpack with the, the laptop goes into. Yeah, right, so right. On, on lab work days, I need to bring that stuff with me. So I finally, I find myself very rarely taking that trunk off, but it has no lighting. Those aftermarket trunks. Now, if you buy a Harley Davidson aftermarket trunk for a, a street glider, road glider, a detachable, road king, detachable. It's not going to have lighting either. Yep. So I don't stock know. is the only way you get lighting on your trunks, guys. Yeah. If you buy, if it comes stock with a bike like an Ultra, mm -hmm. and it's not detachable, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So this is a cool way to add lighting to an Ultra, but I think it's even better for uh, a street glider, road glider, road king. When you put a detachable trunk, you have no lighting. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the tail light, it uh, it's 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 probably the easiest installation that we've done to date. Uh, it, it really it, is. It, it it's right there with the 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 bag blades, or the it's not as easy as the fangs, but damn near close. <laughs> because yeah. you just you have sticky tape on yeah. the tailo, but yeah. on the fangs you don't. But that's it. That's the tailo is to describe it. It's a U shaped light that adheres to the bottom of your tour pack with 3M tape. And then you plug it in uh, to your rear brake with their included <laughs> harness. Yes. And uh, interesting that you say the bottom. I don't want to give people the wrong impression of that. It does go on the bottom, but one would think, uh, I don't need people to see under my bike. Yeah. Interestingly, it it flares out and you can see it to the sides and the rear of the bike because of the way it's kind of rounded and curved, I suppose, the way it's designed. Yeah, because when you put it on the bottom, people be, I, my first thought is, what the fuck would I put lights pointing <laughs> down on the underneath of my bag? But all I can tell you is obviously they wouldn't make something shitty. Um, it, you can really be seen from the rear and the sides. Leave it at that. Yeah. The, the funny thing about it was, is I thought, oh, I hope this isn't gaudy and sticking out. You know. Yeah, and, right. But when you put it up underneath, uh, it's very subdued. The way they designed it, it's uh, kind of a gray color uh, when it's off. Uh, it's very inconspicuous. But when it's on, that some bitch is bright. You wouldn't even notice until it turns on no. that it was even there, unless you Not were really looking. That's what's so cool about it. Yeah. Yeah. When the bike was super up super streamlined. When the bike was up on a lift and you're looking up underneath, you kind of see it. But when it's down in its normal no. stance, you don't even see the not light. Until you, not it until just, you set it power up. It just disappears until you turn it on. It's very well done. And what's cool about this light is, like I said, it's U-shaped. So you've got light to the sides and to the rear. Yep. So it's a run, turn, brake. It does not have light strike technology. But when you hit your brake, the rear lights up. When you hit your turn signal, the sides light Amber. Up. Yeah. Yep. It's, right? No, red. Red, it's sorry. Red, red all the way around. Yep. Very cool. Um, an easy way. I, I highly recommend this for guys that have detachable trunks that want to add a little bit of lighting to it. You got to. Yeah. This is a must on a trunk, guys. Um, what a great 
uh, you know, piece of equipment, the trunk to get extra lighting that a regular guy can't. Plus it gives you some lighting up high, uh, different levels so that cagers can see you've, you'll have some down low and then now you'll have some up high. Um, in it's fact, Lurch was rear ended while his trunk was not on. No, oh, you had a trunk on, right? Uh, that was a but rental you were bike. a rental bike. It was a rental bike. That's right. Did it yeah. have lighting on the uh, trunk? Was it a uh, ultra? It was an ultra. Okay. So it probably did. It did. Yeah. It did. It was, but it was during the day. Yep. And I yep. was actually accelerating. Had away. you had a Talo, you would not be fucking talking about this. I'm P- just telling you. Potentially. <laughs> just, potentially. I say it, dude. Potentially. Because <laughs> I was accelerating away from a stoplight. Light just turned green. We're starting to go. And a gal was not paying attention, probably looking at her phone. No. And I heard, I heard squealing tires, and she schmucked me. Luckily, I was moving. So I was able to get on the gas and continue in a straight yep. line. Uh, Guarantee you had a Talo. But if I had a Talo, <laughs> the, running, the running light would have been on. It might have helped me out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's true. Some extra light up there, dude. Who knows? Uh-huh. All right. I just had to say that. All right. I'm probably full of shit. All right. Anyways, moving on. Uh, oh, here's some information you didn't say. The Talo comes light smoke. Um, this light smoke low profile. F- yeah, but don't we have some other stuff? We were, is that okay? Never mind. I'm thinking of another product. So light smoke, low profile light features bright red run turn and brake light with 84 built in yeah. LEDs. Little Not more, 83. A little more detail there. Yeah. When- 80. Four. It just kind of disappears. Uh, I don't even notice it uh, stuck underneath that that tour pack. Not until it's on. And you turn it on, you're like, holy shit. Yeah. So I've got the Latitude Taillight with uh, Light Strike technology. I've got the bag blades, and then I've got the Taillow on the back of it. And uh, Your you know, ass is lit, it's lit, bro. It's lit. Lit. <laughs> it is lit. But here's the thing. It all looks Fire. Good, but it's not gaudy. It's fire. It looks good. What they, is that what the kids say? I don't know. It's that's fire? just what I say. It's oh, okay. fire. It's very lit up. <laughs> that's what the kids say. Uh, but it's tasteful and it's done yep. well and it looks good. Yep. Uh, and it also provides good lighting at night. Yep. Or that's a good setup. Day too. That's a yeah, damn. That's the biggest thing at night. It's daytime where you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. More traffic plus lights can't be seen as well during the day. So the more you have back there, especially that LED stuff. I remember, dude. Uh, so this is a funny story. So we were doing Oscars. I'm not kidding you guys. This is a true story. So I'm trying to film this. Obviously we're filming all these installs that we be going on the YouTube channel and the store listings. Um, but we were, I forgot how f and bright. So we were doing Oscars oh, ultra, yeah. Yeah. right? What, which one is that? The latitude. So that's the latitude, which the latitude. It, it's a, it's a, a little bit more, uh, uh, there's more involved when you when you replace it on the street glide and the road glide on the ultra. It's pretty easy right. the way they've designed it. Yeah, yes, it's pretty quick to put on. So what I was uh, saying uh, on, on that story was, so we were putting the latitude on, um, and it's got light strike technology, and I literally was trying to film it, and that thing I was looking at it because I'm trying, I'm telling Lurch, I'm like, hey Lurch, and we we're just doing some B roll, and I've got the cam set up. And I'm looking, I'm like, go ahead, right signal, go ahead, left signal, go ahead, break and shit. We do it over and over because we're grabbing some B-roll for the video. I was literally seeing effing bright <laughs> black spots, dude. I yeah. It was blinding me. I go, holy shit, Lurch. I'm like, I forgot with the light strike technology, you can actually turn it down. And you we could. actually turned it down because it's so freaking bright it will blind you and make you see like black spots if you look into it so didn't we turn his down yeah so you can adjust i forgot you can adjust the run brightness and uh we we dialed the run brightness down to where it's a little more in line with the lights that are on his trunk already so there that, you go so that it didn't look like he was hitting the brakes going down the road yeah right i mean the, you can have it on the brightest of run it's settings and it'll still your brake light's going to be brighter but that's a you know you crank that thing up. I think it's one to ten, and if you put it on ten for run, it's a little bright. I think we knocked her back down to like <laughs> five or six or something. So, and also it made it um, it made it look like uh, similar brightness. It was to more his meant trunk. to be, yeah, exactly. Right. More like his trunk lights, so yep. that when he hit it, it was very obvious. More aesthetically pleasing. But you, hey, sky's the limit, dude. Yeah, because yeah. with that, that's another thing. I'm glad we brought it up because the Light Strike app. Uh, you know, the Ciro light strike app, you can, that's another setting. I mean, it's just amazing, but very customizable, very customizable. I guarantee you'll see black spots. If you run that thing and have your buddy hit the brakes <laughs> and look into that thing. I was, after a while, I couldn't even see the camera <laughs> lens. I was like, what the hell dude? Uh, or, uh, the, the display anyways, uh, we've already talked about fang turn signals. Uh, that's the first one run turn. And then, uh, yeah, let's talk about 
And brake, run, brake, turn if they're in the rear. Yeah. Yeah, run, turn, brake in the rear. For your fangs, those are the pop-in signals to replace your uh, regular bulbs. Bag blades, talk Love about them. those a little bit. Love them. They are, they are great. A, they're a, a, a very low-profile light that adheres to the back of your saddlebag underneath the lid. Can I stop you there Please. real quick? You say adheres. We I want to back up a little bit to the Talo. When we say adheres, guys, there's no drilling right. um, on either the Talo or this one. Um, so they attach to your bags or underneath, but it's all 3M sticky tape. So take it from there. Sorry, I just wanted to say that because we may have some new listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So the bag blades mount to your the rear saddlebags underneath the lid, right? You put them right underneath. And they they when they're off, they just disappear. But they add a, a, a lot of dimension to your bike. And what's cool, if you have the uh, latitude and the bag blades, it almost looks like the turn signal's being thrown from the latitude up to the bag mm-hmm. blades. Yeah, right. But it definitely, right. yeah. And even if you don't have a latitude tail light, just, and you just add the bag blades and your serial fangs, yeah. it looks like the fangs throw it to the, the bag blades. Good point. And it just adds a lot more dimension to your bike. So now you're going down the road. Not only do you have those bullet signals, you also have this um, long, uh, uh, well, it's a light that's the the width of your bag now stuck underneath there. And it just adds a lot of dimension and brightness to the back of the bike. And those are an easy installation. Oh, my God. Love mine. Just about as easy as the Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. Those those two products right there. Uh And fangs. Fangs are the easiest. But literally, you could have all three of those installed in like 40 minutes, 30 I, minutes, 45 I, minutes, maybe. I won't have another bike without the bag blades. Yeah, I no l- doubt. I love them. Yep, fangs and bag blades. In fact, I agree. I don't, we, fangs, fangs, bag blades for my bike, and a uh, crown tail light. Yep. Bam, you are freaking rocking and rolling yep. in the rear. I mean, yeah, for a street glide. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Um, all right, the other big one uh, that you should consider is filler panel lights. I'll pick this one up, Lurch. Yeah. Uh, filler panel lights, like on your Electras, like our police bikes or your Ultras, they've got that big cutout in between your bags and the rear fender. It's a big, ugly oval cutout that's just a void and you can see through it. still don't know why Hardy does that. It's ugly as sin. STs too. STs too, yeah. Ugly as sin. And uh, yeah, I forgot about that. And so uh, these, man, these all these are is their filler panel lights, exactly what they said. Panel filler lights. Literally, you fill it and uh, they are also adhesive so no drilling nothing um and uh actually they have a screw they go on the side um where you fill right yeah, yeah there's depend, a but they come the to the bolts you don't drill depends on the model i'm going to talk about that the yeah, okay. adhesive gotcha. so anyways on the ultras or electras things like that um there's a couple bolts with some nuts they go on the side we'll show you how to do it very simple but no drilling nothing like that they also make the filler panel lights your street glide and road glide actually have a painted panel in there so it's not as ugly and it looks really nice like your street glide specials and road glide specials but you can still fill it with the filler panel lights and those are just truly adhesive those ones they just stick to that panel that's already there run turn brake on those all right so i do want to mention the filler panel lights themselves don't have light strike technology so whether you put them on your street glide electro whatever uh in there you're just going to get your signal um and your brakes and your running lights now what we did uh, for our police bikes, we actually put this. As, so there was a couple options on our police bikes talking about filler panel lights on their 2023s. Remember I said earlier, we didn't have any technology back there. Um, we wanted some extra lighting, um, but the filler panel lights don't come with the light strike technology. But our police bikes, I wanted them. Number one, they're huge. And so it adds a lot of extra light back there because it's a big void to fill. So I, I felt like that would be a lot of light. And then I did want them to bump. Well, we did make them bump and... Full disclaimer here, we uh, um, Ciro doesn't make any claim that you can get those to strobe with aftermarket products because they don't sell it and they haven't tested it. What I can tell you is you can test it. Um, we used a custom dynamics on this. It's a uh, strobe modulator. It goes in your brake line. We show you how to do it. It's plug and play. It goes in between. You split your line. And then it has like 10 different modes. It's got a little rocker, not a rocker switch, but a little dial switch on it. And you can set it to do different things. It's not an app. It's not Bluetooth. It's literally right on. It's like a candy bar. And it's got two plugs on it that you split your brake line. And I've been, I was using one on my street lead for a lot of years, especially when 
uh, before light strike technology serial products i was using it it works great um, but again no disclaimer from us um, you know uh, your product may not be warranted things like that just understand guys uh, if you choose to use a, a product that's not uh, made specifically for serial products but with that said we did put this uh, light strobe modulator in Mag- there magic strobe i think is what they call magic strobe it. from yeah. Uh, yeah we don't sell it um, no affiliate links or anything like that on that. Um, but I did buy one of those and I put it in line and it really, uh, does work with the panel filler lights from zero. And so now, uh, we have patterns back there, uh, with our police bike. Um, so yeah, I had forgotten, uh, that that's what we did. So, uh, yeah. Um, anything else on that lurch? Oh, the other product that I, so they had asked me, uh, my department, what, specific products I would think could help us light the rear of those bikes up and uh, get some strobe action or whatever. My other option was the bag blades and I would have liked to also add those, but the department's buying everything and they chose that they only wanted to spend money on one thing. So I went with the filler panels, but if it was my money and I could uh, prove it, um, or if I was in a position of authority, I would uh, put the bag blades also. And again, you could split the line. Um, I would only have one of those strobe. I would probably leave the bag blades like they are and just have them signal and run. And then I would split the line and just make the uh, filler panel light strobe. So yeah. And did I clean that up good enough? Yes, you did. All right. Uh, There's, and so this is the next product we're going to talk about. We're pretty excited about. This is one that you were looking at. This is the one I would have got. This is what you would have got. Now we may get both. Yeah. Oh, nice. Let's hope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is a new serial product called the Armor Tail Light with Light Strike. So this is something you wanted for your police bike, but uh, that's how I found it. Timing wise, it just they're not out yet. I they're, went they're to Zero Sight and I was searching, searching, searching. Yeah. I was like, dude, I didn't know they had this. <laughs> well, they don't. <laughs> they don't yet. yet. <laughs> it says out of stock, and what we found out is they are in production. They will be out soon. Uh, they should be out in. They said early December. Is that what they uh, said? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, our, our contact there at uh, Ciro wanted to send one out and get us get it in our hands. Uh, so hopefully we'll get one in the near future. So we are can, they sending it out? Oh, we're going to get her to send her one. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Did you yeah. e- email her? I'm working on. Oh yeah, nice, I'm nice. On. No, I'm asking because yeah, I'm like yeah. either you told me this or uh, you're just telling me this now. So good. Okay. Oh yeah, it's coming. All right, it's coming. Awesome. So we'll be testing this out, but so this is a very cool product. It's called the uh, the Armor Tail Light. So if you've got an Electra and Ultra where you've got that old boxy square tail light, uh, this is a very affordable option. It is just a direct replacement. It's it's the square tail light, but it's a little more uh, stylish, I would say. But it's got it's LED and it's got the light strike technology. Mm-hmm. So what they say is it's designed to directly replace the stock rear tail light on most ninety nine liter. Harley Davidson models. That big square tail light mm-hmm. you guys see on the Electras and stuff and Ultras. Yep. Yep. And uh, so even like. And it a, looks the same. It looks the same. Same square. Same shape. Just a little bit. It's got a little more style to it. So like on Oscar's bike, uh, he's got that 2021 CVO with that square tail light. Uh, we could have just replaced uh, his tail light with that. Mm-hmm, uh, right. Which is a good option. It's right. a very good option. So this is probably a little more budget friendly versus the latitude tail light. The latitude tail light has a little more dimension. Plus and, it's got signals. Stuff to it and signals. Right? Directional yeah. signals, right? Yeah. This is just a tail light. Just a tail light. So you've got to look at all these different options to decide what's best for you. But uh, going back to the show notes, uh, what they say about it is that uh, it, it uh, directly replaces the stock rear tail light. Most 99 liter. Uh, Harley Davidson models the armor tail light with right light strike technology, multiple LED lights uh, that illuminate with a variety of programmable break a- and startup animations powered by the light strike app. Available in high strength polycarbonate red or light smoke, so you can get, you can get the red or light smoke depending on what you like. Included in black or chrome accents, the DOT and ECE certified tail light will provide the maximum. Mm. That's a big claim. Mm. The maximum visibility and style while riding. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Excited about that product. And uh, we're lucky working with Ciro. We get some pre-production uh, products. In fact, the uh, Latitude tail light was completely for pre-production. The for the Ultra. For the Ultra. Yeah. Uh, yep. No still, instructions. No instructions. Nothing. <laughs> not even packaged. It's no. just in a, like in a yeah. box with some. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. It's cool to get our hands on this pre-production stuff that we're able to check out long before it comes out. So, um, all right. And uh, boy, yeah, we are going, but we're going to wrap this up here uh, in short order. Let's talk about some front serial lighting that we love and recommend. First, obviously, long standing, 
been running it for so many years. We sell the heck out of them. This is an absolute must, guys. Uh, get rid of your, it, this is thing's even brighter, obviously, than the Daymaker. Um, I have done some comparison videos on that on the YouTube channel, but it's our beloved Ciro Vision X LED headlight. Check it out. It's awesome. It looks awesome. And uh, it's going to provide just an ass load of light up front. And again, talking about safety, running with that high beam, that thing, it gets noticed. Already talked about fang, fang turn signals up front. Um, Lurch did a good explanation of that. Um, additionally, on my bike, uh, the fang headlight bezel. Uh, they've also got it for road glides. They do. And that's yes. another one of those things that uh, uh, when uh, it got sent to us, we put it on my bike. I thought, I don't know. Look, it's going to be gaudy. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I thought so. Because they, yep. they, 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 it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an accent light that goes to the side of the headlight. And uh, it's, it's clear, but it's also had some chrome accents. I thought this is going to really stick out and be very noticeable. And it may not be very aesthetically pleasing. Once I put it on the bike, beautiful. Yep. Love it. It does look great. Yeah. And uh, the Fang headlight bezel, guys, it basically, especially on a street light, you know, that big void around your headlight where all the bugs go and you can't get up in there. Well, it back, it basically plugs that and it kind of gives a Fang look over your headlight. We've done videos. It's been out for a long time. It's got white lights uh, to each side of your headlight, giving some style up there and some visibility. And then it signals uh, amber when you, uh, it's run and turn white when you're running and amber when you are turning. So some extra signalage. I don't, know, I, I don't just know made up that's a word. word. Yeah. I wanted to. I don't know if is a word. <laughs> <laughs> but you knew what I meant. I did. Right. All right. And then, of course, guys, I'm running on my street glide. We did a video a long time ago on it. You want some light up front. And these aren't just for visibility of motorists seeing you. These things are for night. And they are our TAC 10 light cannons by Ciro. Love my light cannons, man. They go to each side. Um, of the fairing. Um, you can run them off your forks. There's a mounting position there. There's also a universal. You can mount them on your crash bars. These are huge effing floodlights. That's what they are. Running lights. And uh, we switched them on mine. You can switch them. And uh, there's a switch you can buy for it if you want. You can have them come on with your headlights or you can switch them like I did so you can turn them off or on. I just pretty much leave mine on all the time. Um, but I, the reason I put the switch is because if I leave my bike on in the accessory position, running my radio or something like that, and I'm just sitting there, I can turn them off so they aren't running the battery down. But that's really the only time you would need them if you want a switch. If you don't do that, then just have them come on and off with your headlight. Um, TAC 10s, dude, I can't recommend them enough. Man, when you ride at night, you'll never go back to just running a regular headlight without some extra light cannons to the side. Serial bat blades, LED turn signals. These are really nice. Uh, they basically go around... Uh, yeah, adhesive around, we've done a video on this too, around the outside of your bat wing or shark nose fairing. And it basically uh, is a strip of LED lights and it shows the actual, you know, outline of your fairings at night. You can basically see that it's a street light or a road light coming at you. Those are also running lights. And then obviously uh, when you turn them on signal, it also gives extra signal, which is really the widest point you can get on the fairing where they sit um, for that signal. And they just outline it really nicely, not only for daylight, but if you're running behind somebody or you know Harleys at all, you'll be like, yep, that's a road glide. Yep, at night, that's a street glide. You can tell totally. And grabs the attention of the cagers because it just right. adds dimension and That's what I'm talking about. To your about. bike, yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. So I was saying it shows your width. Yeah, yep. yeah, exactly. Uh, all about what we're talking about, safety guys. Um, and then side zero lighting. Um, Lurch had these LED saddlebag hinge lights and uh, they basically are lights that go in your saddlebag hinges the where you open your bags, right? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the, they add a lot, uh, light to the side because normally you don't have any real light to the side of your bike. You'll have a little bit from your turn signals and whatnot, but to actually have light on the side of your bike, this is an, a great option. Either the saddlebag hinge lights or the Talo. If you've got a Taylor, tail, if you've got a tour pack, the Talo yeah. adds some light to the side. Yeah, good. And uh, you like those side saddlebag lights. It. They're great. Love them. They're great. Yeah. And not super difficult to install. I know we did a video on that too. We did. So we've already got, a, we're going to do, we got some new videos filmed that aren't out yet on a few of these products mentioned, but a majority of them, uh, we've already got complete installs. That's what we do for you guys. You buy the product from us, you get the free install video right there on the listing. That is how we roll here. All right. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Good episode, Lurch. Do you want to, uh, you got anything to tie up about safety or lighting before you do? I want to do this right here. Now, we absolutely love 
our patron members. We want you to become a patron member. We want to get to know you better. We want to offer you benefits. We have so many benefits that we could give you for becoming a patron member, access, all kinds of stuff. At any rate, for whatever reason, you don't want to become a member and you're just saying, hey, we appreciate what you do. And I'm just, I just want to throw a flat donation at you. Well, we never balk at a flat donation. The following three people we want to thank. We'd like to thank Sean Cunningham of Little Neck, New York, Vincent Apar- Aparicio of there you go. Deer Park, New York, and Gene Ward of Hudson, Florida. Gian Ward. Gene. Gian. That's not Gian. That's Gian. That's Gene. Yes. You can call her Jan if you want. It's Jean, though. <laughs> uh, that's what we're saying. All right. So uh, lawbindingbreaker.com forward slash donate. That's right. Uh, we appreciate it. It helps put a little fuel in the Law Binding Breaker gas tank. And keep this thing running on down the road. And Jean or Jeanne, I don't know. Send us a message to let us know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she did. He. I don't know. They. They. Yeah. There's <laughs> <laughs> we just use a pronoun. I don't know. Anyways, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we appreciate it. And uh, lawbettingbiker.com forward slash donate or on the homepage of our website, there's a huge donate button. You can hit that. And uh, yeah, we really, really appreciate everybody's support. So there you go. And you can throw a little tip on if you want when you're purchasing from the Law Abiding Biker store. Not required, but greatly appreciated. And uh, now that I'm uh, working in the store, I'm grabbing those tips and adding them in here to the donations nice guys we appreciate that thank you so much yeah that's awesome and so many of you have been leaving a tip on the show it's just amazing that you're supporting us purchasing from us and then on top of it you're leaving a tip so all right guys there you go a lot of products a lot of talk again we're going to do a full episode uh boy that's going to take a while you're going to have to start putting that one together and then i'll do some research Mm -hmm. and we're just going to start uh, that might be a two-part episode depending (laughs) that's how you say that i was just thinking that yeah that might be a two-parter it probably will yeah should be some great information though, guys. Um, but there you go. Get started. Uh, you know, I, obviously I know uh, money talks and uh, all that kind of stuff, but uh, you know, we've given you some things to start with and then you can always start, like you could just start out with rear fangs and then, you know, another paycheck down the road, get front fangs. You know, you don't have to do it all at one if you can't afford it, but at least do something than stock because stock is dangerous and uh, you want to stay alive out there. You want a long, uh, fruitful life of riding motorcycles. And mm-hmm. we know a lot of people's riding careers have been cut short from collisions or being rear-ended. Yes, lighting plays a huge part in that, being seen, but also rider safety courses and learning how to properly handle your motor. There's a whole plethora of things that go into that, but lighting is a part of that puzzle. And so the more things we can put the p- puzzle pieces together and be safe, whether it's writing abilities and or lighting and or clothing. Um, it's just dumb not to do it in my opinion. So yeah, get started at least do something for your safety. It's all I got to say, Lurch. What do you got to say? I would say that the lighting is probably the easiest thing that yeah, you, you can go. do to make yourself more conspicuous to the cagers and make yourself safer. Mm. Nice on that bombshell. There we go. Well said Lurch. That was a long episode. It's almost a two-hour episode, bro. Oh, is it really? It's a, we're at 148 right oh, now. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I thought hour max, dude, hour max. Uh, yeah, I, right. I know that it's always going to be at least an hour and a half. And then we had a... Hey, uh, we have been done some just barely over an hour, hour and 15. Very rarely. <laughs> very rarely. That's true. <laughs> and we did have a uh, break uh, to refresh Oh, that's beverage, right. So. so that was about five minutes. Yeah. So, so cut five minutes off. It's still a long episode. <laughs> After a 12-hour work, they make it 14 now. Good God, dude. We'll shut her down so you can go and get to bed. No doubt. Be, I got to do it all again. Yeah, be ready to do it again tomorrow. Do it all again. You know what we got a whole bunch of is those cruise tools. Oh. We just got stocked up on stocked those. Stocked up, bro. Yeah. There you go, guys. It's something you should be carrying like Lurch just talked about in his saddlebags. Of course, I have them. Also carry these, got right? My, yeah, KLR too. KLR, because we've got metric ones, and I carry this on my police bike too. Use the hell out of it, guys. We have used these things not only on cross-country trips where we needed to make a bike repair, um, but on police bikes, which we have to do, especially in training and things like that, but it is our beloved Cruise Tools RTH3 Roll-Up Travel Toolkit for Harley-Davidson and American Made V-Twin, like Lurch said. We've also got ones for metric bikes for Indians, We've got your back. Uh, there's no reason to get stranded uh, over a small minor repair. Like literally, 
We uh, could have towed bikes on some trips and we didn't because we had this. It wasn't a huge issue, but we were able to repair it on the side of the road. This is a quality made toolkit, has everything you need for a roadside emergency repair. Test it any use right here by the law abiding breaker. Yep, it has our stamp of approval. Get it already. That's a cruise tool RTH3 or any of our Indian or metric other metric kits, guys. We got mm-hmm. the small little uh, OH3, you know, the little smaller kit yes. if you don't have room for the big one. I suggest you have both. Yes. We take the, the uh, small gauge. multi-tool kit or the multi-tool, so to speak, and we wrap that up in the RTH3 kit. That's what I do. Uh, me too. Um, yes, you do too. And uh, we brought it right to the Law Abiding Biker store for you. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store. Nothing but awesome, awesome reviews on that bad boy. We'd love to hear the stories of how it got you out of a pinch. That's right. Lurch right now, who's shipping a lot of stuff, uh, has it ready in the Law Abiding Biker store. Uh huh. He'll uh, pack some nice uh, padding in there for you. Oh, yes. We haven't mentioned this yet, but uh, for all those that have it's bought really from the Law Abiding Biker store in the past, you probably received a box with peanuts in it. Penis? Peanuts. Oh, peanuts. Peanuts. You know, the old school you said foam. You tried to put your peanuts. Peanuts in there. Which is a great uh, option for uh, keep your meat out of keeping, the packages. Keeping your products <laughs> safe. But we've stepped up. We have. Uh, a Meat. air pillow maker. <laughs> so that, yeah, it's a pretty so big deal. It's not when you were, it is a big deal. It was a significant investment. It, it, it was a significant investment. So when you uh, buy pack uh, products from us, you used to get your box full of peanuts. Uh, now you get some air pillows, kind of like Amazon. We're, we're, we're stepping into the new age. Oh, yeah. We're freaking big time with our air pillow <laughs> maker. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, guys. We're out. Bye.